Chris Potter. Friday, January 13th, 2017. And I've got a presentation for you today. What effect would a close encounter with a highly charged object like planet Nibiru or a brown dwarf star have on our Earth? Physicist thoughts. Let us begin. Let us go forth to the new millennium, my boobs. Yes. All right. Figure one shows an image taken from the surface of the Earth of an object that is thought by many to be planet Nibiru. This planet is thought to be a highly charged object surrounded by plasma and to have two oppositely charged plasma tails. Now in this document I discussed, I discuss, <laughs> pardon me, the kind of effect we can expect if an object like planet Nibiru or a brown dwarf star were to come close or very close to our planet. Let me interject, I am still very interested in the entire Planet X phenomenon. I'm just releasing a bunch of my old data along with physicist videos and just saturating the web with Chris Potter goodness. Let's continue. Figure one, object thought to be Nibiru. Yeah, this guy right here. Okay. Looking like a dark shadow, clearly visible from the Earth's surface. Planet Nibiru is actually thought to be surrounded by a cloud of plasma. Now, if Planet Nibiru, if Planet Nibiru indeed has two oppositely charged plasma tails, then these would be like the electrodes on a stun gun. Now a stun gun is shown in figure two below. In the stun gun, when the electrodes are fully charged with charges of opposite signs, due to a potential difference of some one million volts, a lightning-like discharge occurs between the electrodes. This discharge is made up of a plasma in arc mode. Stun gun electrodes with plasma arc mode discharge between them. Gotcha. So, what effect would we expect from an object like planet Nibiru, which may essentially be a huge planetary stun gun to have on planet Earth? Probably nothing good. Number one, Earth's upper atmosphere would be influenced by Nibiru's highly charged presence first, and we should see very many huge bolts of lightning between the upper atmosphere and the surface of Earth. I tell you what, there was an electrical storm here last year that scared the pants off me. This occurs between the extra, so I can only imagine a big one. This occurs because the extra charge on the Earth's upper atmosphere would find the best path to ground itself or the surface of the Earth. Okay, Because Nibiru is highly charged, we would see a huge number of lightning strikes in areas on Earth over where Nibiru is passing. Or since the planet is expected to be much larger than the Earth, we would expect to see huge lightning storms on the side of the Earth facing the object. That makes sense. Number two, the lightning would also heat up the atmosphere, which would cause major thunderstorms. Number three, eventually the Earth's interior would be charged above what's normal. There are currents in the Earth's magma that generate the Earth's magnetic fields. These currents would increase in magnitude. Now electrical heaters give off heat because they have a high resistance to the flow of current. With the current flowing through the magma increasing, resistance would increase and thus the magma would also heat up. Great. When the magma heat up, yeah, heats up, it tries to expand, which puts increased pressure, uh, pressure excuse me, on the Earth's crust. I've never read this document until now. This causes the crust to move in places where there are fault lines. It causes magma to move up into volcanoes, which then erupt. 
It also may cause further breakup of the Earth's crust, i.e. the creation of new fault lines and earthquakes and fun stuff like that. So number four, since Nibiru is supposedly a much larger planet than Earth, it is expected that if it comes close enough, it would block the sunlight from the sun for a time, three days of darkness, therefore causing darkness on the Earth's side that should be in daylight. Thus, the whole Earth would be enveloped in darkness for as long as Nibiru remains between the sun and the Earth. Number five, a large planet coming very close to the Earth may cause the Earth to actually stop rotating for a time, that the two planets remain close enough. This is because Nibiru's electrical attraction may be so strong that it grabs the Earth's crust to the point that it stops rotating. Number six, if the Earth's rotation is stopped due to an object like planet Nibiru grabbing the Earth's crust with its electrical attraction, the mantle under the crust may continue rotating, thus causing a crustal displacement. This may cause a pull shift so that even when the planet Nibiru is gone, the north and south rotational and magnetic poles, excuse me, may have completely different positions to what they have now. Antarctica may, after the event, for instance, be at the equator. Great. Now, if the Earth's rotation stops, shearing forces inside the Earth's crust, which is already broken, probably from a past encounter with an object of this nature, is likely to cause Earth huge earthquakes. Different parts of the Earth that are now above sea level may sink and be covered by ocean afterwards, and also the ocean floor may rise in places leading to new land appearing. This document goes hand in hand with the three days of darkness document that I did. Number eight, the planet may be able to grab the Earth's crust, but the liquid part of the Earth's surface will continue moving as usual, creating huge tsunamis that may cause large parts of the Earth's continents to be swamped and <laughs> completely drowned by water. Number nine, what happens with the Earth's oceans may also happen with the Earth's atmosphere. It is a gas that will tend to continue to move even if the crust stops moving, which would lead to very strong and destructive winds. The major upheaval that Nibiru can unleash on planet Earth is of the same degree that has been reported in the Bible to have happened during the Great Flood. Some experts actually believe that when the Earth's crust broke up and water in the crust, which would have been which would have been under very high pressure, was ejected from the growing cracks at supersonic speeds. This water hit the upper atmosphere and fell down again, causing torrential rain on the earth to an extent that the earth was flooded with water. Whoa! Then over a time span of months, the huge empty caverns in the crust where the water had been collapsed, the water settled in these areas, creating huge oceans and allowing land to again reappear. However, now we do not have such a huge amount of water within the crust, so the potential is just for all volcanic eruptions, huge planetary wide earthquakes, huge tsunamis, and destructive winds. Oh, okay, I feel a lot better now. <laughs> <sighs> Figure three. Yeah, I agree. I agree that that's a brown dwarf star. I don't believe that that's actually Venus. I never have. Brown dwarf star. Another brilliant image from the Cosmic Artifact Research website. www.cosmicartifactresearch.com forward slash red sunset star versus Venus. Please continue to go to CJ's website and YouTube. I've asked him to keep that data up. I think it's extremely important to our research and I applaud his works and efforts and hope that he gets rewarded uh, for that. The large amount of ionized material surrounding this object suggests that it is one of the brown dwarf stars draining our sun of energy. Now, a close encounter with a brown dwarf star, like the one in figure three, which may be the size of a gas giant planet would probably have a similar effect on our planet. A brown dwarf star is also a highly charged object, and since it's a star, it's basically an anode, while the Earth is a cathode. Thus, the Earth would be attracted to it. Awesome. So the Earth's crust may also be held stationary, causing huge earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, a potential crustal displacement, a pole shift, huge tsunamis, and destructive winds, and flying cheese sandwiches. 
huge lightning storms would also be likely to occur in the Earth's atmosphere. The difference is that a round dwarf star is surrounded by an ionized cloud of material. Uh, if it is a helium core brown dwarf star, it most likely will be surrounded by a cloud of helium. In that case, helium may then fill the Earth's atmosphere. And since helium is a good fire ex extinguisher, no fires would be able to burn during this time. Since a brown dwarf star may be one-fifth the size of the sun, it coming close to the Earth would block out sunlight for a time to the point that even the sunlight that is supposed to illuminate the moon may not reach the moon. The whole Earth would also be surrounded in the brown dwarf's ionized cloud of helium, which would then probably block the even the light from the stars. This all sounds like the Three Days of Darkness document. And by the way, that document I did, the physicists didn't do. <laughs> we just named it Three Days of Dark. Or I just named it Three Days of Darkness of Physicist Thoughts. Because I thought that she would approve. She does. Pretty crazy. So let me repeat. The whole earth would be surrounded in the brown dwarfs. Dwarfs? Dwarfs. Dwarfs. Gosh. The whole earth would also be surrounded in the brown dwarfs. ionized cloud of helium. Which would probably block even light from the stars. This means that the earth would be enveloped in darkness. Without even the light of the moon or the stars. So that's probably how... Nobody sees light in the three days of darkness. And since the helium would also make the lighting of a fire or a candle impossible, this would be complete darkness on Earth. Wow. In conclusion, a close encounter between the Earth and a large, highly charged object would be a planet enveloped in plasma or a brown dwarf star surrounded by a cloud of ionizing gas which would cause major destructive events on our planet's surface and to the Earth's crust. I don't think bases under the surface are much safer than being on the surface. The only safe place in this case is not being anywhere on Earth. To conclude, a physicist's thoughts, it's Chris Potter. Thank you again and have a great day. <laughs> Along with physicist videos and just saturating the web with Chris Potter goodness. Let's continue. Figure one. Object thought to be Nibiru. Yeah, this guy right here. Okay. Looking like a dark shadow, clearly visible from the Earth's surface. Planet Nibiru is actually thought to be surrounded by a cloud of plasma. Now, if Planet Nibiru... If Planet Nibiru indeed has two... This planet is thought to be a highly charged object surrounded by plasma and to have two oppositely charged plasma tails. Now in this document I discussed I discuss <laughs> pardon me the kind of effect we can expect if an object like planet Nibiru or a brown dwarf star were to come close or very close to our planet. Let me interject. I am still very interested in the entire Planet X phenomenon. I'm just releasing a bunch of my old data. Chris Potter. Friday, January 13th, 2017. And I've got a presentation for you. Babe. What effect would a close encounter with a highly charged object like Planet Nibiru or a brown dwarf star have on our Earth? This is this star. Let us begin. Let us go forth to the new millennium, my boobs. Yes. All right. Figure one shows an image taken from the surface of the Earth of an object that is thought by many to be planet Nibiru. So, what effect would we expect from an object like planet Nibiru? which may essentially be a huge planetary stun gun to have on planet Earth. Probably nothing good. Number one, Earth's upper atmosphere would be influenced by Nibiru's highly charged presence first, and we should see very many huge bolts of lightning between the upper atmosphere and the surface of Earth. 
I tell you what, there was an electrical storm here last year that scared the pants off me. This occurs between the extra, so I can only imagine, two oppositely charged plasma tails. Then these would be like the electrodes on a stun gun. Now a stun gun is shown in figure two below. In the stun gun, when the electrodes are fully charged with charges of opposite signs, due to a potential difference of some one million volts, a lightning-like discharge occurs between the electrodes. This discharge is made up of a plasma in arc mode. Stun gun electrodes with plasma arc mode discharge between them. Gotcha.